vital signs is a fundamental assessment in the nursing care. That's cool on the beat. Welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing well thank you so much for joining me once again back onto my channel my name is belinda and if you've not already subscribed please don't forget to press the subscribe button as well as turn on the notification bell so you get a notification every time i upload for my new subscribers welcome and for my old subscribers welcome back this is a nursing based channel all things nursing as well as other bits and pieces as well so as you read from the title of my video once again i'm back with another nursing video this time around guys i'm going to be talking about basic vital signs observation that every nursing student has to have some sort of knowledge of prior to going into nursing i feel like personally knowing these kind of observations especially if you're just into what is the normal range of basic observation for every patient or for every person would be of great knowledge when you are assessing whether a patient is deteriorating or not now within the NHS in the UK um, we have a thing called in the news chart and um, the news chart basically stands for the national early warning sign chart um, I'm gonna insert a picture over here for you guys to have a look so basically the news chart helps us to determine how much a patient is scoring and whether we have to escalate the situation or not however recently there has been changes that has been happening in regards to that so now they have switched from paper news chart to electronic so basically now most trusts if i could say um have electronic devices where they record the patient's observations and um, which actually in a way makes it easier because recording it on an electronic device basically sh shows an alert it alerts you that oh either a blood pressure has to be rechecked the patient had low blood pressure or high blood pressure it's sort of a reminder whereas the, the chart guys is a matter of you have to basically remind yourself so vital signs is a fundamental component of nursing and all the baseline vital signs so when i'm talking about baseline okay i'm talking about baseline in regards to the first set of assessment obtained from a patient so prior to them obviously coming into hospital the first thing that you always do when a patient comes into the hospital you do a set of vital sign observation on a patient that you have to know as a student or as a healthcare worker include the patient's respiratory rate so that will include the amount of breath a patient takes or a person takes per minute then patient's oxygen saturation the patient's temperature so body temperature overall as well the patient's heart rate which is also known as patient's pulse as well as a person's blood pressure so those are the five basic vital sign that you would include as a baseline in determining whether your patient is deteriorating or whether your patient is stable so the purpose of this video guys like i said before is basically for you as a nursery student or as a healthcare worker to be able to identify when a person's vital signs is within range however i do want to say that depending on a person's past medical history or current diagnosis sometimes the vital signs are not within range and that's fine because to consider either a patient's current diagnosis or pmh pmh stands for past medical history that's what we use as the abbreviation so for example if a patient is diagnosed with copd and they are scoring an oxygen saturation of 92 percent from our knowledge we know that that's not in the normal range because normal range would be between 96 and 100 anything below they would be scoring however due to the patient's chronic illness which is copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which affects the lungs it results in the patient having some sort of issue with breathing so in that case the doctors would create a pathway for the patient and say now the patient's pathway was 88 to 92 percent oxygen saturation on one liter of oxygen when you go and take that patient's vital signs and you do the patient's oxygen saturation then you will know that that patient should be aiming between 88 and 92 because that is the pathway that the doctor has rated for that specific patient but according to that specific patient obtaining oxygen saturation between 88 and 92 is of normal range for that specific patient 
with that specific diagnosis if that makes any sense so guys that was basically just an example next so now what i'm going to do next guys is i'm basically going to be carrying you guys through the five basic observations i'm going to be also um including examples so i've got a few of my basic vital sign tools here in order to illustrate to you what i'm talking about so about so the first one i'm going to talk to you guys about is temperature temperature can be a sign of various things going on within the body so various factors influence temperature so the normal temperature according to the news chart i'll insert it again would be 36.1 to 38 degrees celsius according to the nhs baseline however like i said various factors have an impact on a patient's temperature for instance now with this whole corona going on people are basically taking people's temperature so if a person for example has a high temperature that could be a sign of infection so in order to take a patient's temperature you will need a thermometer however you are able to take a patient's temperature manually now there's two ways that you can take a patient's temperature manually. The first way is obviously by placing the back of your hands on their forehead. Never place your inner hand on the patient's forehead because the inner hand is less sensitive to temperature due to the thick skin as well as the blood flow within your palm. However, this way is not really an accurate way. Another way for you to do it is to feel the temperature of a person's chest. However, most of the time you will be using the thermometer to take the temperature. So now I'm going to show you guys basically how to go about. Okay, so in order to take a patient's temperature, you are going to need their ear and then also you're going to need, obviously, like I said, your thermometer. Thirty six point eight for his temperature. If he had a low temperature, for instance, from this ear, normally you go ahead and you try the other ear as well next guys i'm going to be discussing the respiratory rate so the amount of breath that the patient takes now the normal range before you are scoring of breath that you should be taking should be anything between 12 to 20 breaths per minute that is the normal range however like i said depending on current diagnosis or your past medical history that may not always be the case when you're checking a patient's respiratory rate always check whether they are struggling to breathe or not like i said before various factors can have an impact on a person's respiratory rate such as copd now with a respiratory rate it could be quite tricky taking it because sometimes when you tell a patient that you are taking their respiratory rate they are the ability to one alternate the way they're breathing so they could be breathing faster or they could be breathing slower depending so normally you wouldn't actually tell a patient that you're taking the respiratory rate you would take a person's respiratory rate as well as blood pressure at the same time so that that way you can get some sort of normal respiratory rate from the patient so you will check a patient's breathing by checking their rise and fall of their chest all right so when you're checking a person's breathing or also a respiratory rate you normally check how their chest or rises and falls rather um so so you can go ahead and monitor the respiratory rate for th 30 seconds and then you go ahead and multiply by multiply that by two to get your respiratory rate cycle per minute however situations may differ if a patient is poorly you have to go ahead and do it per minute next guys i'm going to be talking about oxygen saturation like i've mentioned before according to the nhs baseline or news chart the normal range of oxygen saturation without you actually scoring is between 96 percent and 100 percent however like i said before in my example earlier depending on your current diagnosis or past medical history it may be different from person to person so sometimes if you go to a patient and their oxygen saturation is on a lower side without any invalid reason which includes any sort of diagnosis depending on the position that the patient was sitting in if a patient is normally lying down, the oxygen saturation may be lower. So you normally ask a patient to sit up and start taking in deep breaths. So if you can actually see that, you will see that a patient's oxygen saturation would be going up. Like I said, if they've not got any current diagnosis or past medical history that may have an impact on the oxygen saturation and the oxygen saturation is lower than the norm. So in regards to oxygen saturation you can take your oxygen saturation on here as well as your heart rate probably the blood pressure machine also has it however you can use this as well with a patient's pulse rate you can go ahead and use one of the fingers and just hold it there and wait for it
So oxygen saturation is 99, 90, 97. 97% and heart rate is 63%, which both of them are in the normal range. If a patient is getting lower oxygen saturation, you would go ahead and ask the patient to sit up as well as do deep breathing exercises. Next guys, I'm going to be talking about the heart rate, also known as pulse. So heart rate also may vary according to a person's age as well as fitness level. Also, a person's pulse may vary between children and adults. So the normal range of heart rate for adults would be different to the normal range of heart rate for children. However, we're not going to go into details with that. So a normal resting heart rate um, would be between 60 and 100 BPM, so beats per minute. However, according to the NHS news chart that I'll insert here, a normal range of heart rate would be between 51 and 90 before you actually start scoring. Right. So basically, a high heart rate can be an indication of tachycardia. So when the heart beats too fast or too rapidly, it pumps less efficiently. So that means that blood flow reduces to the rest of the body, if that makes any sense. On the other hand, if you've got a slow heart rate, this may be a sign of bradycardia. However, once again, guys, it depends on a person's PMH as well as current diagnosis. If you don't have a tool to use to take your manual heart rate, you've got two ways of taking manual heart rate or manual pulse rate. The first one is by taking index finger as well as your middle finger, placing it just between your jaw as well as your lower neck. And you can literally feel, obviously I'm, I can't take it myself because I'm talking, but you would ask the patient to be still and quiet so you can be able to take um, the pulse rate. Another way of taking a patient's pulse rate is by placing your index finger as well as your middle finger once again on your wrist or on a patient's wrist and you can feel a pulse rate as well somewhere there. You just have to search for it and you can feel it somewhere. And once again, you can do that also for 30 seconds and then you multiply it by two, whatever you got because that's equivalent to one minute. So basically that's the way you take a manual heart rate of a patient. So guys, the last vital sign that I'm going to talk to you guys about basically is blood pressure. Blood pressure normally has two numbers. It's got the top number as well as the lower number. So the top number would be your systolic. So your systolic basically is the force at which your heart pumps blood around your body. And then the lower number is your diastolic. So the normal range of blood pressure would be anything between 90 over 60 to 120 over 80 mmHg, which stands for millimeter mercury. Anything over 140 over 90 millimeters mercury would be an indication of high blood pressure. And anything lower than 90 over 60 millimeters mercury would be an indication of low blood pressure. So guys, these are basically your stats in regards to your blood pressure so let me go ahead and measure the blood pressure so next guy i'm going to take his blood pressure i do want to do a separate video on how to do manual blood pressure because i think it will be interesting to watch but anyway for now this is basically what i'm using this is my, uh, your own home kit obviously but when you're in a hospital setting it's a different kit so this is basically what i'll be using for the manual blood pressure so you would go ahead and place the cuff around the person so normally you would ensure that this line over here goes just right here in between the arm. So you would put the cuff one to two centimeter above your inner arm. The instructions are normally written for you. So normally you would go ahead and place the patient's arm on a pillow if they are sitting, just to get that extra pressure off. So then you would go ahead and press the cuff machine. So 
so the blood pressure is 131 over 82 which is once again in the normal range and that machine also takes your um, heart rate so heart rate 64 which is also once again in the normal range so guys this guys was just a video showing you guys how to take basic observations as a nursing student basically and also having some sort of knowledge um, about the normal range of a patient to see whether you've got to escalate the issue or not or whether your patient is actually stable I think this is a good way of knowing as a foundation because vital signs is a fundamental assessment in the nursing care so guys this brings me to the end of my video i hope you found this video useful as well as educational i hope you like this video and give it a thumbs up don't forget to comment like and subscribe down below and i will hopefully 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 see you guys in my next video bye